Hey, and in this video. <laughs> hey, friend. <sighs> hey, friend, in this video. Brrr, drum roll, please. It's my long awaited video on a color study chart. <laughs> Just made that up on the spot. Um, I get asked to do these all of the time. It's a color study chart. I'm gonna teach you how to create one of these on your own. Um, the parameters or you know, math that I used um, to get a really nice clean rectangle for each one of them. Also, I love doing color studies. Um, I have a really big one. One second. Don't show me. A really big one that I did probably five years ago um, that is just a really pretty thing to look at in the office. It's very inspiring and cute. Um, so if you have a lot of time on your hands, you can do something that big. But in this video, I'm only going to show you one that's this size. So we're going to do eight different rectangles. Um, and this exercise is super good for um, if you're new to color mixing and color theory, or you want to get more in-depth knowledge on color theory and understanding of how different colors correspond with each other. And also with watercolor, I don't use white to lighten my colors. And so I'm going to teach you that method of lightening your colors using water and the depth that you have within one specific color or one mixture of colors. Um, so it can kind of open your eyes to the opportunities that you have with one or two different colors. And so for example, if I'm trying to mix up a skin tone or a specific green, I'll kind of look at my chart and say, oh, I really like that green that was mixed up using phthalo turquoise and yellow versus Prussian blue and yellow. So it's a really informative exercise on color, color theory, and color relationships and harmony. So with all of that said, let's get started. All right, let's get started, let's get started. Um, so as I said, this thing is really pretty to look at. But I want you to have patience because the exercise it, itself kind of takes some time. And so you have to, you know, don't get too frustrated if it's taking a long time or if the whole using your math brain and using a ruler is starting to frazzle you like how it does for me usually because I'm incredibly type B. Um, and while I used to be good at math when I was in school, I no longer use that brain very much anymore. And so it can be a little bit like you're going crazy. And so just have patience with it. Again, also, not again. Also, um, I use inches because I'm American. And so I apologize to all of you who are like, but how does it convert <laughs> to the metric system? I don't know, sorry. Um, okay, so basically where we're gonna start is on a blank sheet of paper. My sheet of paper that I'm using, I guess I should have known the size, so I can tell you. Um, however, I kind of tore this sheet of paper so it's a completely random size, uh, but it's roughly 13 and a half inches by 10 inches. So if you have a nine by 12 sheet of paper, you're gonna adjust the sizes between each box and rectangle just a little bit. And to clarify before we get started, what I mean by rectangle and box is, so this will be a rectangle. So one card, I guess, one color study card is the rectangle and then each box or square or swatch, I might say, is one specific color. So those are the words that I will be saying and what the, I'm referring to when I say them. So box, square, or swatch is just one individual color. Rectangle or color card or something like that is just going to be one rectangle. All right, so on my blank sheet of paper, how I've mapped out in order to have 
four rectangles on top and four rectangles on bottom, so two rows of four rectangles, is each square is about three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch. And then I have a gap of about an eighth of an inch between each square within one rectangle. So a quarter of an, or an eighth of an inch underneath each box and on the sides of each box. And we're going to have, just like this one, we're going to have three across and five down. And so each box is going to be three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch. And each little gutter or space between each box or square is an eighth of an inch. And then between each rec rectangle, I have about a quarter to a half of an inch. So that there's a little separation. So depending on the size paper you're using, you're going to have to alter that just a little bit. Um, but I would recommend having a gap of an eighth of an inch between each square and then like a half an inch gap between each rectangle. All right, so, and then down here is a three quarter of an inch gap because it's the same size of each square to separate the rows. So I'm gonna take my handy dandy ruler and I've got all of my squares mapped out, all of my lines, and so I know exactly where each rectangle starts and ends and then the gaps between. And I'm also kind of making notes of which colors I want to combine together for each rectangle. And so in this specific tutorial, I'm gonna show you for my top row of rectangles, I'm gonna show you opera rows for each one on the top row mixed with a different secondary color. So each rectangle is going to be opera rows mixed with four different um, secondary colors. So you're gonna see what opera rows looks like mixed with four different colors. And then my second row is going to show you lemon yellow deep for all of all four of them, all four rectangles mixed with four different colors. So you can see that yellow color mixed with four different colors. And so you're gonna see some fun things, some different greens that you maybe wouldn't have expected. And whether you're doing the same colors as I am or not, I highly recommend branching out and trying out colors that you think will look disgusting together because they may surprise you. Some of those colors that you think may look icky actually are really beautiful. So try it out and it will just open your mind to the possibilities you have with the colors inside your own palette. All right, so I am ready. I am going to use a stroke brush. This is a quarter inch um, velvet touch brush from Princeton. Um, I normally use round brushes. So if you're a loyal follower on here, you're, you're gonna be like, why is she using a square brush or a stroke brush? Um, and that's because I want my squares to be really pretty and precise. If you're like um, me normally and you're more type B and you're not as like, I don't need them to look precise, then you can do more of a little um, strokey swatch type of deal for each color. And that can be with a round brush. But if you're wanting everything to look really pretty and clean like this, then using a wash brush or something with a flat edge at the top is going to give you that look. All right. so. To get started, I'm gonna wet my brush with some of my warm cup of water. So I always have two cups of water, one for my warm colors and one for my cool colors. This is going to be really, really crucial for your color study exercise so that you separate those colors. Also as an option that you may want to consider is having a third cup of water that is just for clean water because we're trying to get clean color mixed with relatively clean color um, to start with, I recommend maybe having a third cup of water if you're really, really paranoid about it. All right, so I'm gonna start with a good amount of water on my brush and I'm gonna load up with the thickest amount of opera rose on my brush that I can possibly get without drying out my brush. And so if I start to hear like a smacking sound when I'm loading more um, pigment on my brush, that means that my brush is drying out. And so I just need a little more water. I'm just gonna dip in, but I really want a thick amount of this color so that because we're going from just opera rose by itself in the darkest value possible, value meaning the darkness or lightness. So I'm gonna say value scale a lot in this exercise. So value just means the darkness or lightness of color. So we're gonna start with opera rose just by itself in the darkest value. And so I'm grabbing more of the color because that's gonna make it look darker or appear darker. 
So I've got a lot of upper rows on my brush and I'm ready to put it down on my first block. Okay, so now that I have a really full amount of upper rows on my quarter inch stroke brush, brush <laughs> I am going to paint my first stroke. So this is why I'm using a stroke brush so I can get really clean edges. But if you don't wanna be really precise with it, then you can obviously do the other method I showed you with any type of brush. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So after you get your first swatch, we're gonna go from full saturated darkest value aqua rose to slightly lighter to slightly lighter than that. So to lighten this amount of pigment that I have on my brush, I'm just going to flick my brush in my water cup back and forth a couple of times to release pigment. And then I'm ready to lay down my second value of just opera rose and it should be lighter. You wanna make sure that when you're swashing your brush back and forth in the water that you're not going too vigorous with it you want a gradual difference in value, not a drastic difference. And then doing that one more time, swashing in my water cup for my third value, third and final value of opera rose. All right, so then, from here, we are going to grab Lemon Yellow Deep and just get a clean row of Lemon Yellow Deep. For this first rectangle, I'm mixing Opera Rose with Lemon Yellow Deep, so I'm getting my fully saturated Lemon Yellow Deep amount on my brush, so really thick amount of paint for this first box. And then same thing we did with the Opera Rose, we're gonna do with Lemon Yellow Deep. So I'm going to now release some pigment in my water cup, in the same water cup, cause yellow is, this yellow, Lemon Yellow Deep, is a warm yellow. So I'm going to my warm yellow cup. If you see a little bit, bit of pink from, or whatever color you released in your water cup, that is okay. It'll blend, it's just a little trace amount of pigment. So I don't get bothered by it because I'm really go with the flow type of personality. But if it bothers you, make sure you have that third cup of water. That is just purely clean water. Okay, and then for our final value, gonna swash in the cup again. Again, it has some pink in it because it's pink water from the Opera Rose. So I might just grab a little bit of yellow and cheat it a little bit. And this isn't math or science here. We gotta fudge some of the rules a little bit sometimes, but we're trying to get after a result, which is a lighter yellow color. So however you get there, following a somewhat parameters of doing what I'm showing you. All right, so from here, I'm gonna go back to Opera Rose. I'm gonna load up with a lot of Opera Rose on my brush, full saturation because we're in this fully saturated um, column here. And then, this might stress some of you type A's out a bit, but trust me, um, this is an exercise in flow and releasing um, and relaxing. And you'll have to do that when you paint. You can't just be so uptight because there might be some things that you would never discover in painting, especially with watercolor, if you were focusing too much on the details and on things getting dirty or messy. And so with this, brush fully loaded with Opera Rose. I am gonna roll on top of my Lemon Yellow Deep in my palette. So again, 
This might stress out some of you type A's, but trust me, just go on one side of your yellow. Don't go all over your yellow. And if it really stresses you out, you can always add water to the area where the pink is sitting on top of the yellow and pick it up with a paper towel. But I'm just gonna go here and grab some yellow so that we gradually move hues from a straight up opera rose color to a slightly, a little hint of yellow in our opera rose. And so that's our next swatch down. So we're getting gradually more yellow as we go down. Isn't that a pretty color? I love this color. These two colors together are so pretty. It's kind of like Starburst, the candy. And then same thing, we're getting lighter, so I'm gonna swash in my water cup. So you can see all of the values within the colors that you're mixing up. And then our final swatch after we've, oops. After we've released more pigment in our water cup, the edge of my brush had some pigment on it still, so it got all down here, but we're just gonna grab some water and move it up. Then, what we're gonna do to get slightly more yellow is we're going to go back on top of where I mixed the pink on top of the yellow. That last color or row that I did is the color sitting on top of my yellow. So I'm gonna grab that and a little more underneath, a little more yellow underneath so that we have now a more orangey color instead of a pink orange. We have an orangey, mid orange. And we will lay down that swatch. Lighten it. And lighten it some more. This looks a touch too yellow to me, like I got too much yellow, so I'm just gonna layer a thin layer of Opera Rose on top of it before it dries. Um, Cause I want it to look pretty and gradual. Remember this is an experiment. It's not an equation. All right, and then next, and our final row for this rectangle is grabbing this color like I did before and grabbing more yellow underneath so that we get a yellow orange. And you'll start to notice with these exercises different secondary and tertiary colors that you can get mixing colors that you wouldn't normally mix up together um, so instead of, you know, mixing red and orange together for, or red and yellow together for orange, you can mix pink and yellow together for orange. And it makes kind of a more blushy, vibrant orange versus your standard or traditional orange. All right, so here you have your first rectangle. We have a hue scale going vertically, or yep, a hue scale going vertically. So we're going from pink and gradually to yellow. And then we have our value scale going horizontally. So we have darker, dark, darkest value, mid value, and our lightest value in this rectangle. So now I'm gonna to move to my next rec rectangle, which I'm going to do Opera Rose with Scarlet Lake in my palette. Again, you can do whatever two colors you want. 
Um, but if you're following along, I'm doing Opera Rose and Scarlet Lake. So we're gonna do the exact same thing for every single rectangle, the all the same steps. So whatever colors you're using, just apply the same steps and have fun with it. So just like Opera Rose and Lemon Yellow Deep, I'm gonna do the same thing with Opera Rose and Scarlet Lake. So I've got a full amount of Opera Rose, and then I'm going to, for my first row of mix of the mixture, I'm going to just dab a little bit of Scarlet Lake. And then for my second row, I'm going to grab a little bit more Scarlet Lake. Okay, now rinsing my brush off completely. And we're gonna do the same thing with Opera Rose again. And now, instead of a warm color, we're gonna mix it with a cool color. We're gonna mix it with cobalt blue, a blue tone color. Um, and so I'm gonna grab, do the same steps, grab Opera Rose. And now grab cobalt blue. So I'm gonna grab some of my cool water from my cool cup of water and load up with a thick amount of cobalt blue for that bottom row of just co cobalt blue by itself. Now grabbing my opera rose and a touch of cobalt blue for my first row. So it's still mostly pink, but a touch of cobalt blue makes it a deeper, more richer pink, slight hint of purple. This one didn't have as much of a gradual build on the back end, so I had too much pink on my brush for these two rows probably, but that's why you're doing these experiments, so you can get better next time and improve how you gradually mix colors and do the value scale and hue scale. So then my final rectangle on this row is going to be Opera Rose mixed with Prussian Blue, which Prussian Blue is more of a kind of a traditional blue, so it's gonna be very different purples than the cobalt blue. So same thing, starting with Opera Rose. And if your pink is dirty or has cobalt blue on it, just grab that, just grab that color and kind of lift it off. And also, the more you grab color underneath, the more it's gonna bring it back to Opera Rose, the true color, so that's why I like to stick to one area on a dollop of color in my palette so that I always have the true color on one side or the other. Now loading up with Prussian Blue by itself for the last row. Grabbing my upper rows and going over to Prussian Blue for a touch for my first row of mixed colors. So 
So already it's kind of looking a little bit deeper than the cobalt and opera rose mixture. And it's just going to continue to get deeper the more Prussian blue I add. So we have our first row of rectangles done and we've already got a lot of fun study under our belt. So you can see all of the different hues that you get with pink and yellow mixed in, the two different blues that we tested out. So continue to test with your colors in your palette. And I mean, I've done huge charts before that are like on 22 by 30 sheets of paper. And so just keep painting and testing it out and chipping away at a big chart if you're doing that. Then I'm gonna come down here and do another row of rectangles, this time with all lemon deep. So starting with lemon deep for all of my rectangles and then mixing them with different blues and a green. So I'm gonna grab just lemon yellow deep on my brush and do the same exact steps that I did for the first row of rectangles just with different colors. Laying down my first swatch of lemon yellow deep and then lightening it with each square. And then this rectangle I'm going to, I marked PT down here, that's for phthalo turquoise. Now back to yellow and now over to my phthalo turquoise for just a touch. With these bottom rectangles, we're gonna see the different types of greens we can get when mixing lemon yellow deep with a few different blues. Okay, and fully rinse it off. And now over to the next re rectangle, we're doing the same thing with lemon yellow deep and now Prussian blue. You need to get some of that blue color off of your yellow. Just scoop it up and wipe it off on your paper towel. Now Prussian blue by itself. I'm gonna start at the bottom instead of at the top for this one. Switch it up. So very different blue-greens between the phthalo mixture and the Prussian blue mixture. And our next rectangle is going to be lemon yellow deep and cobalt blue. Then off to grab cobalt, these greens with lemon yellow deep and cobalt blue mixed together are quite surprising, or at least they were for me last time I mixed them.
All right, then our final rectangle, we're gonna be doing lemon yellow deep with sap green, which is just a straight up mid-tone green color in my palette by Winsor Newton, which all of these colors, by the way, are Winsor Newton because they always are. That's all I use, um, have been using anyway for the past few years. So again, going back to my yellow, doing the same thing. And then loading up with sap green. It's a pretty green by itself, but we're gonna see a lot of different yellow greens in this particular rectangle. And now you know what to do. Grab and sap green and a touch of lemon yellow deep. And our final row for this entire tutorial of sap green and lemon yellow deep together. Obviously you can keep going if you have more paper. Using the same steps, mixing up the colors and having fun with it. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> Look at how lovely it is. If you just have a little time on your hands, some patience, and what you just, what? Do down it perfect. So cute, so pretty. And I love having my color charts hanging up on my shelves. I have this Big one that I did a few years ago, back in the day when I didn't have a baby and I had a lot more time on my hands. <laughs> um, I did this one along with another one that's the same size, but I have no idea where it went during our move. Um, but anyway, if you have a larger sheet of paper and you know, the opportunities are endless because you could literally do opera rose with all the colors in your palette. Um, uh, Scarlet Lake with all the different colors in your palette or whatever colors you have in your palette. So have fun with it, be adventurous, get your palette a little bit dirty. It's going to be okay. We're not going to you know, hurt or harm anything or anyone. Um, and it gets clean again, yeah, I promise. And you know, it's not wasteful. These pigments are so strong and so saturated that, you know, a little wiping off of pigment here and there, it's all chalking up to progress and practice and understanding color theory and color harmonies. And so it's practice. It's helping you learn more and open your mind and eyes for different color relationships. And so I recommend doing these color study charts, you know, kind of on the semi-regular because one, they're very fun. Two, they're super pretty to look at. And three, they're incredibly informative on color. And so when I started doing these color study charts, I um, learned so much more about color theory, which is basically how I approach any blank piece of paper these days. Whether it's a pattern, an abstract painting, a floral painting, a landscape, I'm thinking about color theory and color relationships and how to you know, kind of shift color and these little tiny tweaks and nuances here and there with different blue greens. If I mix blue, uh, cobalt blue and lemon yellow deep together versus phthalo turquoise and lemon yellow deep or whatever. And so it's incredibly informative. I highly recommend if you weren't trying it with me during this video and you're maybe feeling intimidated after watching, trust me, everyone can do it. You just gotta have a little bit of patience um, and some time on your hands. So comment below with your favorite color combo that you did in your own color study. I would love to see all the fun color combos and the different colors that people tried below. So send me your favorite color combo below and let's see what people say. Well, if you tried it for yourself, I would love to see your practice on my Instagram. Tag me at Jenna Rainey on stories, on your feed posts, etc. I would love to see if you gave this a shot 
and how it turned out. And I'd love to send you some love. So love to send you some love. Um, but let us know in the comments if you love this video and what maybe what future tutorials you'd love to see from us. Make sure you hit subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future videos from us. If you hit subscribe, you'll be seeing my videos and you won't miss a beat. You won't miss any of them. And so make sure you hit subscribe. That, that lets me know that you love what I'm doing and I love the support. So, so much love going around to everyone. Thanks again for watching this video and I'll see you in the next tutorial.